द प्रोड्यूसर कंज्यूमर प्रॉब्लम इज अ क्लासिक सिंक्रोनाइजेशन चैलेंज इन कंकरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग इट हैज टू थ्रेड्स दैट शेयर अ कॉमन फिक्स साइज बफर वन थ्रेड इज अ प्रोड्यूसर थ्रेड एंड इट्स जॉब इज टू जनरेट द डेटा पुट इट इन टू द बफर मल्टीपल टाइम्स एंड द सेकेंड थ्रेड इज कंज्यूमर इट्स जॉब इज टू कंज्यूम द डेटा वन कंपोनेंट एट अ टाइम दैट इंक्लूड्स रिमूविंग दैट एलिमेंट फ्रॉम द बफर ऑल्सो बोथ दीज थ्रेड्स विल रन कंकरेंटली so this is our scenario we have to make sure that the producer won't try to add any data into the buffer if the buffer is full and the consumer won't try to remove the data from an empty buffer in today's video we will implement the producer consumer problem using synchronized block first and later we can use blocking queue as well before we start if you are new to the channel please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you won't miss any new updates now let's begin first let's see the implementation using simple wait and notify mechanism using synchronized blocks code like this we have already seen in our previous videos where synchronization was implemented now this is our buffer class which will be used to exchange the messages between producer and consumer in this we have two instance variable one represents the size of the buffer that we will set whenever we'll be creating the object of this buffer class and second one is a linked list which is a data structure which will actually store the messages produced by a producer and the consumer will also consume the messages from this linked list only then moving ahead we have a produce function it accepts one integer item as an argument and it also throws one interrupted exception because we are calling wait inside that so either we have to enclose whole of this code inside a try catch block or we need to add a throws instruction in the declaration of the method inside the produce method we have this synchronized block and inside that synchronized block we have this while loop so what this while loop actually doing it is checking whether the current size of the buffer is equal to the maximum size of the buffer if that is the case that means the buffer is full now so if someone tries to call this produce method and buffer is already filled then that particular thread will go into the waiting state so that's why we have called wait method here and once that buffer size is no longer equal to the maximum size that means consumer might have consumed some of the data and removed from the buffer then the control will go out of this while loop and also uh, a notify signal will be received from the consumer and then as part of the next instructions the item which we have passed as an argument that will be added in the buffer using buffer dot add method call and also after that we are printing what data we have produced and what are the current components of the buffer and after doing all this we are sending a notify signal as well so that if there is any consumer thread which is waiting due to the empty buffer they can also consume the data because the producer has already produced one item similarly we have the consume method again here we have synchronized block and inside that instead of checking whether it is the size of buffer is at the maximum value we are checking whether the buffer is empty so if the buffer is empty then the consumer thread should go to the waiting state and how the things will proceed from here suppose uh, in the beginning the buffer is empty and the consumer called the consume method and it saw that buffer is empty so it will go to the waiting state then it will wait for a notify signal from the producer thread at the same time when it has gone to the waiting state the producer thread will also come into execution and add some element to the buffer and after adding the element we can see we are calling the notify as well so this is the signal which will be received by the consumer thread and it will go out of the waiting state so once it go out of the waiting state it will call buffer dot remove first so what this particular function call will do this function call will do two things first it will remove the element the first element from the buffer and also it will return that removed element so what we are doing we are storing that first element in the item variable here so that we can print it out or use it according to our business needs so in the next line we are printing that uh, this item we have consumed and what is the 
current state of buffer what all elements are currently present in buffer and after uh, consuming it we also have to send the notify as well so why is that so if you remember uh, the producer thread will be in a waiting state if the buffer is full so suppose buffer is full now and consumer consumed one of the elements and removed it from the buffer as well so that means now buffer size has been reduced but the producer thread is in waiting state so it will only wake up once it receives a notify signal so after removing one element we have make sure that the there is a ample space for storing another element in the buffer so we send a notify signal to the producer thread that they can produce a new message now so this is the whole working of our buffer class so this buffer class will handle the exchange of messages between producer and consumer the producer will be using produce method to add an element to the buffer and the consumer thread will use consume method to retrieve and remove the, the element from the buffer now let's see uh, how the producer and consumer are also implemented so this is our producer class so the producer it extends thread because we will be creating multiple threads using this and it has an instance variable of buffer so this is the same buffer which we have just discussed so in the constructor we are passing the buffer as a as an argument and setting its value and in the run implementation so it's an infinite while loop you can see while true and in that what we are doing we are generating a random integer using math.random and after that whatever value is generated we are calling the produce method using it so if you remember from the buffer produce method we can pass on one integer element and that integer will be added to the actual buffer here and this whole block is added in a try and catch block so that if any exception occurs it will be handled here itself now let's move to the consumer implementation as well so in the consumer implementation again we have an instance variable of buffer and that buffer is set using the constructor of consumer and if we see in the run implementation again we have a an infinite while loop so what it is doing it is making use of buffer dot consume method and if you see in the buffer class itself the consume method is returning the value which is being consumed so whatever item we are consuming from the buffer that is also getting returned here now i hope the complete implementation of buffer producer and consumer is clear to you because the similar kind of code we have already uh, implemented in our previous one couple of videos as well now let's try to uh, demonstrate this complete implementation so in the main method we are creating an object of buffer class and we are passing the buffer size as 3 that means the maximum size of the buffer or the maximum number of messages that buffer can contain is 3 now uh, let's say we are creating multiple producers and a single consumer so that we'll be able to see whether uh, actually it is storing maximum of three messages or it is storing more than that also so for that i have this for loop where i am creating a producer object producer is uh, extending thread so we can directly create its object and start that particular object also so this buffer we have already created that we are passing as uh, an argument in the constructor of producer and similar way we are creating five different producers so what they will do five different producers will run five while loops continuously and try to add uh, random integer values to the buffer using produce method and in the end we have also created one consumer using the same buffer and started the consumer as well so now as per our expectation we are expecting that the size of the buffer which we have printed here uh, during produce and consume as well that should not exceed uh, size 3 so let's try to execute this program and observe the output So here we can see from the output because it will print very quickly because we have not added any sleep time here. So if we observe the output, uh, the size of the buffer is never increasing 3. That means always at max 3 number of elements will be available in the buffer because we have added that logic in the buffer here itself. So whenever the size becomes 3, 
the producer's threads will go to the waiting state and will no longer add any more element but if, because if you see we have five different producers and only single consumer so if we have not handled it properly as part of this producer and consumer problem solution then we would see that more number of messages will be added than the actually messages are getting consumed so this is how using very simple notify and wait method and synchronized blocks we can fix the producer consumer problem although with this approach we are able to fix the issue as per the requirement but the approach is less recommended because it requires more low level handling of synchronization and it can lead to potential issues such as deadlocks so is there any better approach than this the answer to that is yes java provides an interface which is called blocking queue this particular interface is specifically designed for solving problems such as producer consumer problems you can use any implementation of this interface as a buffer these classes handle synchronization for you so do you don't have to add any synchronization blocks or handle any uh, buffer size wait or notify on your own everything will be taken care by the implementation of this particular interface now let me explain the blocking queue briefly in a very simple way there can be two type of blocking queues one where the size of the queue is unlimited that means you can add any number of elements you want and you will never have a condition where queue is full and you are not able to add an element the second type is where the size of the queue is fixed now both of these blocking queues should follow few rules and let's discuss these rules for fixed queue first if the queue is full and someone wants to add some elements to it they have to wait until there is some space available and similarly if someone wants to take something out of the queue but it's empty then they have to wait until there is something in the queue to take both of these conditions should met for the limited size queue where the size of the queue is fixed but as far as the unlimited size queue is concerned it will never have to worry about the adding of new element but still it has to take care of the consumers which are consuming and removing the elements from it so the second condition where someone wants to take something from the queue but it is empty then also they have to wait until there is something to take so if you see this is the exact requirement that we have for our producer and consumer problem blocking queue is also safe to use in multi threaded programs that means it won't get messed up if multiple people are trying to add or remove the elements from the queue at the same time so we can say that it will automatically take care of the scenario where producer cannot produce anything new when the buffer is full and will wait till it gets some space in the buffer to push and similarly for consumer it will wait for the buffer if it is empty and will continue once producer pushes some data through the buffer now let us see the code implementation using blocking queue then you will realize how easily this producer consumer problem can be solved using the blocking queue implementation here let me quickly go through the producer consumer and demo part first because there is no change in that so you can compare it with the previous implementation the very small change here is instead of that buffer class we are using blocking queue buffer that we have implemented here that we'll be discussing shortly and adding the elements to them so we are again calling the produce method to add an element and in case of consumer we are calling the consume method to consume the element from the buffer and exactly the same implementation of our demo class we will be creating five producer and single consumer and instead of normal buffer we are using blocking queue buffer implementation that we have implemented here and here we have added the capacity 10 so that depends on you whatever capacity you want to test or it is required you can mention the value here so in this case we are adding 10 as a capacity now let's move to the blocking queue buffer implementation so this is the whole implementation of blocking queue buffer so if you remember in our previous implementation of buffer we have to take care of a lot of things we need to add the synchronization blocks we need to uh, check whether uh, the buffer is full in that case the producer should go to the waiting state and 
also similar for the consumer in case of empty buffer and additionally we also have to call the notify uh, signal as well so that the other thread can continue so here you can see the simplest implementation that you can do in this buffer queue we are using a blocking queue of integers so that we can store integers in this blocking queue and in the uh, constructor here itself we are passing the capacity so whatever value we are passing in the demo here we are passing 10 so in our case an array blocking queue of size 10 will be created and assigned to this buffer now if we see the produce function it accepts again one integer element and simply we are calling buffer dot put so using this put method we can add an element to the buffer so there will be two different method let me show you the other method also so we also have add method here itself but why we have not used this add method but we have used the put method let me show you the java doc for that so in case of put method if you read its uh, documentation it inserts the specified element into the queue waiting if necessary for space to become available so this thing is already handled in the put method so whenever buffer is full then if we have called dot put method it will automatically make that particular thread go to the waiting state until there is some space available in uh, the buffer so that is why we have used put method here so the whole synchronization block and everything we have done in the previous example that is taken care by this put implementation in the array blocking queue and again in the end we are printing that uh, this item has been produced and what is the current value of all the elements present in buffer and if we see in case of consume method also we have a method take so take method is also similar to the put method so let me just show you the java documentation for that so what take element will do it will retrieve and remove so that is our requirement right we need to retrieve as well as we need to remove the element so this take method will do exactly that it will retrieve and remove the head of the queue and it will wait if necessary until the element becomes available that means if the buffer is empty then it will wait for buffer to have some element then it will retrieve and remove so if you remember the same thing we have implemented in our consume method in the previous example so that is also taken care by the implementation available in take map and in the end again we are printing whatever item we have consumed and the complete elements of buffer and we are returning that consumed item as well for the further processing now quickly let us uh, execute this program because we will be creating five different producers and one consumer now let's see if we are able to see the similar uh, output that we have seen in our previous implementation to make it uh, more similar let me make the size to 3 itself now let me run this program so here you can see again the size is not exceeding 3 at all so every time uh, at max the size of uh, our buffer will be 3 only and once the size is 3 it will automatically uh, put the producer thread to waiting state and it will keep on waiting until some consumer thread has consumed the message and removed it from the buffer as well so with this we have come to an end of this video if you find this video useful please give us a like and share it with your friends thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time with another exciting topic from multi-threading till then keep learning